get the four yards on that carry. So just across midfield, you know, Moeller had that ball out there in the crook of his elbow as well, Jack. Everyone's uh, got to remember to wrap up and protect here. A lot of times you'll see a quarterback do that. This is not the way a running back will handle the football. See how loose that is oh my. for Jose Moeller? That's the way a quarterback carries the football. And these spread offenses in college, these spread option offenses, and in high school where you're going to have an option offense or a wing tee, the quarterback has to handle the football properly, has to keep it close to his body in the crook of his arm. So just across midfield, now it's Whaley. He's got a little room to run and then is stopped like a brick wall hit him. That brick wall was going by the name of Jordan Garcia. You can see the Joe Searson in there too. <laughs> he was pushed backwards, the dust That's flying up as Whaley was pushed backwards. Whaley's had a nice ball game. He's very quick off the toss and he can also catch the ball out of the backfield as well. As a nice weapon in the changeup LCC offense. So call it a four-yard gain to make it third down and three. A big play here coming up from the Carlsbad 46-yard line. In a defensive first-half struggle at Sweet Kirschmar Field. Happy to have you with us live on Time Warner Cable Sports tonight. Cisneros bluffing the corner blitz. And there's a penalty flag. And it looks like all that motion by the big purple defense might have forced a false start here. Well, yeah, when you're bringing 10 guys, that offensive line is going to get kind of skittish. You're right. And they were all up there on the, on the line of scrimmage. Going to bring the blitz. Cannon. Corey Soto, it looks like number 80, was the culprit on uh, the false start penalty. So many penalties for both teams, in particular for LCC. Uh, that's three false starts already on La Costa Canyon in just the first half. So third down and eight coming up. Ready, put, and now the Lancers with a chance to pin their ears back a little bit. Moeller's got four wide. Double stack wide receiver set. And still some confusion. There's another timeout coming here. They get the protection they want. Oh, delay of game is the call. Just too much of a mix-up. They wanted the fullback on his left hip instead of his right. By the time the decision was made, another penalty flag and another five yards chipped. Well, this Lacoste Canyon offense has not been as productive as last year's number two ranking in the Division I area. You can understand that because they didn't return anybody who was you know, their top rushers and their top receivers. It was basically Moeller and a lot of new guys on this offense. This is seeing a lot of inconsistency, a lot of penalties here early on for Lacoste Canyon in this ballgame. Well, there's a lot of seniors on that offensive line, but so far, a lot of confusion. Third down and 13, and Moeller straight back to drop. Pressure coming up the middle. He's going to run right through there. Vince Ewing has his paws on him and brings him down for just about a three-yard gain. He was trying to reach in to strip that ball, too. I was just, just going to mention that, Craig. We talked about it earlier, how Moeller had that ball away from his body. Ewing had a chance to strip that football. Instead, he forces the three and out. So on fourth and long now, Cisneros is dropping back once again to punt to catch a punt. Bobby's in punt formation. There's the big stop Serrato in there as well. He loves to put his nose on the football. Punt angling away from Cisneros now rolling. He picks it up and knocks it out of bounds. That could have been a disaster. Was hit hard by Connor Garrett who was out there shooting on the uh, corner. Nice job by the gunner. And Connor Garrett, and I'm not sure at that point in time if you're Cisneros, if you think you can get around the corner, which is obviously what his decision was, if you think you can pick it up, I don't know. This is a, this is probably not. That the ball's time. moving yeah. sideways. Good one to get out of the way of. All you wind up with is a bruise on your right rib. Yeah, yeah not the time to pick that football up. And, and it's so low to the ground too. You have basically no chance of getting it that low. Ricocheting and everything. Well, Cisneros will think better of it the next time. From the 12-yard line, Justin Morales leads the Lancers to the line of scrimmage. Five-step drop. Looking for the sideline. Barber was running there. He got clobbered by Michael Mildbrandt. And the pass was never going to be caught but a very dangerous pass. Yeah, and Morales was looking to the near side the entire time. He had two wide receivers split out to the far side, but was only looking at Ashton Barber on the near side, and therefore the safety came over to help on the near side, and there was no, no lane there whatsoever for that ball to get through. Morales goes to the sidelines after every play, gets the call 
Played direct from Bob McAllister. He's looking on, waiting to see some consistency in this game from either team. Now Barber's in motion. Pascarella feeling the back of his lineman to find a seam, and then he rumbles right on through it across the 20-yard line and toward the 22, nosing his way near the first down is Pascarella. Such a patient runner. Such a patient way of going about the middle of this football field here for Nick Pascarella, allowing that experienced offensive line to set things up for him and going directly up the middle of the field for a first down. A gain of nine, and just look at that patience. He's just pushing along Geo yeah. Lap. Says, all right, get out of my way. Now I got a room. <laughs> I got room to run, and I'm going to use it. So it's a gain of nine. Big crowd here at Carlsbad looking on, anticipating a first down as the ball's across to the 21. Third and short, Morales just took it himself. A little short keeper. Did he have enough there? I believe well, I he did. That's real close. Yeah, I think he did, but he paid the price for it for yeah, sure. Zach Golson, just a beast on that defensive line. But the chains will move as it gets out to the 24-yard line. And they've called that play before here. Third and short. It was less than a yard to go. I thought Pastorella had perhaps picked up that first down the last play, but it was a close enough play that then they had Morales just quickly uh, scamper across that first down marker. Wasn't really a coordinated surge on no, that uh, no. quarterback keeper. But he didn't need that much. It was, it was a very, very short distance. All right. Chains have moved. And now the ball moves into Pascarella's bread basket. He is pushed back, strung out, still on his feet, and brought down hard by Garrett. But that play started in the middle. Dutch Hapgood was part of it. Pushing him out. Michael Milkbrand strung him out. And then Garrett brought him down. LCC's done a nice job today of stringing out those plays, as you say, Craig, to the sidelines, bringing several guys. Garrett's a hard hitter coming up from that safety position. They strung out several of these plays. These tosses out wide, the handouts and the sweep to Pastorella have not been effective today. He's had his success up the middle. And it really was a great job by first the linebacker plugging the gap and then the D-back stringing him to the sidelines. Loss of four. Now Morales setting up a screen. Here it comes the other way to Kalani Lasua. And Lasua is dropped and a penalty flag comes out late. Uh, I think we have a late hit here, some extracurricular activities. After Lasua was down. Well, that would be another disastrous penalty for LCC. Let's wait for the call. And it does look like they're going to be marching it forward. And another personal foul, late hit, unnecessary roughness, the second against the Mavericks this half. That would have been setting up a second and 14. Right? Such a huge amount of yards to gain. You give them a first down. So many penalties here tonight for LCC. Instead, it's a first and 10. So, Carlsbad's been given about as many gifts as a visitor could bring. And yet we're scoreless. Short of gift wrapping it. It's there. It's there for the taking. It's still just a third down despite the penalty. Third down and three. It should have been an automatic first down, shouldn't it? And they're going to whistle this play dead on a, on a foul. Well, not surprising that the yellow flag is thrown. Well, that's a little confusing. I'm sure we'll get this all worked out. This referee crew has been very busy, and they're going to whistle oh, back Carlsbad five more yards. Well, that's going to make it third and eight. And what they did was they called that personal foul for the spot of the foul, which was in the backfield on the late hit. So while they only needed 14 yards, the Lancers, they were not given the first down. And now with the penalty, it's third and eight. So some surprising calls there. But this game has just had a hard time finding its rhythm. On both sides, you're right. Third down and eight now. Ball at the 26. And Morales finding Serrato over the middle, and he dropped the ball. Oh, Fabian Serrato running a quick slant there, a little circle route. And he had room to run if he caught it. Absolutely. Serrano, the backup tight end, came across the middle on a slant. The defense was focused on Ashton Barber, who came in motion and wide to the near side, cleared out that zone. There's Connor Garrett deep to receive the punt. Coming off of the toe of Tommy Porter, the junior kicker. We talked about field position earlier, the battle being won by Carlsbad. Let's we'll see what kind of field position LCC gets. 
That punt was tipped. A little bit, getting a hand on it was Jacob Driver. It takes a terrific roll for Carlsbad all the way to the 45. And that's where LCC will take over. So credit to Jacob Driver who helped tip that punt, I believe. Looked like he got his hand on it. And LCC has been opportunistic of both on defense and on special teams this year. They had a punt return, it was, they had a punt block, they returned it for a touchdown, and they had a kickoff return, a special teams, maybe a couple of fumble returns for touchdowns. This is an opportunistic special teams and defensive unit for LCC this year. Well, Carlsbad spirit and cheer still very high here. The score very low. But LCC now with maybe their best opportunity. They've found a rhythm on defense. Let's see if they can run three straight plays on offense without having a penalty call. This one's a pitch to Whaley. He's got a head of steam, stopped short by Serrato after a gain of about five. And Whaley came into this ball game averaging just over four yards a carry. But I like his quickness, like the speed there. They're gonna use him on the pitch back. And he's also caught a couple of passes. He has seven receptions coming into this ball game, already one tonight. I like the Whaley option for LCC. Make that just a three yard gain into the 42 yard line of Carlsbad. Seven. LCC rushes to the line, a quick play. It's Whaley going right this time. And he is driven down hard. Lap was in there, and coming in low was Michael Vandenkolk. Nice job by Giovanni Lap on that play. As Whaley, as you mentioned, Craig can get up ahead of steam. How quick he is. He gets going on the pitch back or on some of these plays to the near side. He can get going. So two three-yard runs. The play getting run in by Jose Moeller. He's joined running off the sideline by sophomore running back Seth Hansen. We've already seen a couple of sophomores in that backfield. Hansen as well as Weston Manor, who fumbled earlier. LCC is changing personnel all over the place. Now Whaley is the lone setback with Hanson in motion. Pitch, Whaley running left, cutting up inside, finding that first down marker. Great second effort. Oh, he's gonna feel that one Saturday morning, but it earned a first down. Whaley came off the field after his last carry and then ran right back on just before the snap. And he's done a nice job. They're gonna use him on these pitchbacks because they're saying they're gonna get that head of steam up. They're gonna allow him to get momentum as he barrels in toward the Carlsbad defensive line linebacking core. A pinballing gain of five. Tough yards, boy, tough yards. Anytime you expose your back to defensive backs that are coming up with a helmet, danger, Will Robinson. Jordan Garcia planted him in the back. But the chains move, first down, Hansen in the backfield now, Moeller fakes the option, he's looking for the deep man, it's not there. Now, scrambling for his life, he's hit, the ball's loose, Simpson knocked it loose, and the Lancers have recovered it again. On the recovery, Vince Ewing, the safety in the right spot, after Moeller got drilled. Boy, dangerous play. You mentioned it the last time. You give these guys time as linebackers hard hitting on the defensive side of the ball for Carlsbad. Broken play, nowhere for Jose Muller to go. Oh. Simpson just crushes him on the blind side there. Man. Steven Simpson, all the credit in the world. And now right back to offense for Carlsbad. First and 10 from their 26. Here's Pascarella. If he had stepped through one more tackle, he would have been off to the races. He tripped over Joey Searson there. Just Nick the is two. down and laying down as we take a look and let's see if Jose Moeller was holding that ball loose again as they'll look at Nick Pascarella here. Pick up of two yards. Pascarella tripped over Joey Searson on that play. This could be an interesting injury. All right, this is the fumble from Moeller. Well, we talked, talked earlier about he wasn't protecting that football. Kind of had a little bit close. You can't, I mean, you can't hide from a hit like this one from Steven Simpson. No, that, that's going to knock just about anyone loose. And Nick Pascarella is up. A great hit by Simpson. Pascarella jogs to the sidelines, which is certainly an encouraging sign 
for Carlsbad. He yeah. gained two on that play. He came out of the Helix game with a deep thigh bruise, didn't play much. He came out of the Rancho Bernardo game last week with a couple of cramps, but he appears to be just fine here. Make it happen now. So second down and long. Pasquarello will take this play off. And it's Barber running the other way. Ashton Barber cuts up the middle of the field, pushes his way across the 40-yard line for a first down. Doesn't get the ball that often, but when he does, Ashton Barber has a little bit of a burst. Just his sixth carry of the season, and that's by far his longest gain as he came in motion from the far side, took the handoff, and a nice job there by Ashton Barber. Call it a 13-yard gain for Ashton and Nick Pascarella. Back in the lineup. Good sign for the Carlsbad Lancers. Ball advanced to the 41. Let's see if Nick gets the ball once again. No, it's going to be Barber this time running left. He cuts back again and this time gets stopped. And in there once again, it is the junior linebacker, Dutch Hapgood. Hapgood was the man who fell on that fumble on the blocked punt in the end zone for LCC. Opportunistic again. No huddle offense now for the Lancers. Morales brings his team right back to the sideline and hands it right back to Nick Pascarella. He steps through one tackle and then gets crushed from behind. And jumping in there was Zach Golson, who always leaves a little remembrance at the end of his hits. Nice to see multiple white jerseys on the tackle. Obviously, if you're looking at Carlsbad and Nick Pascarella, you know that just one man cannot bring him down. Third down and four after a four-yard gain, and now the Lancers are going to huddle up. Time is running out, and they're going to call a timeout. 125 left in this first half, and a big third down and four coming, so Bob McAllister's going to talk it over, give his offense a chance to regroup and get a breather. Yeah, they were running that, that no-huddle offense here, and with Pastorella being hurt and then coming right back on, he needed a breather. It was a good time here with only a minute 25 left in this half. Bob McAllister to take his first timeout. Also, tonight's game is being broadcast live on the internet at kbcsports.com by DVD. We're getting ready for halftime coming up, which will include an interview down on the field with Courtney Dwyer. Hey, if you're a golfer, you won't want to miss Inside Southern California with Bruce W. Cook as Bruce previews the upcoming Nationwide Tour Tour Championship coming November 1st to the 4th for the first time in San Diego at the Barona Creek Golf Club. Tune in Monday at 7.30 on Channel 19 in the North County, or you can watch anytime on demand. That's inside Southern California, available only on Time Warner Cable. Pretty pretty cool to have that Halloween event there, the Nationwide Tour, the Meyer Leagues of Golf. We already have a couple of PGA stops and the U.S. Open coming to town. Nice to have the Nationwide Tour here as well. So two, my, two timeouts remain for the Lancers. Third down and four coming. Wally Sooto is in the slot. Barber in motion. Cisneros is the lone back. This is a passing play. So Oto over the middle. Ball tipped up. Is it going to be intercepted? Going the other way. Here's LCC for a touchdown. Stedman Slaughter. Slaughter got the tip, picked it up, and ran to Broadway. Third defensive touchdown of the year for the Lacosta Canyon Mavericks and the second return for a TD for Stedman Slaughter. They picked up a 64-yard fumble recovery earlier in the year and the big-time interception return here for the first points of the ball game. We'll take a look on the replay. I think it was Shelby Williams that got his hand in the ball. Morales was staring down Sooto on that tight end middle seam route that they love to run on third down. And a great job by the Mavericks. They get the sudden score on defense. Special teams provides the extra point as Bobby Zalud, the sophomore kicker, puts it through. And with 112, suddenly LCC's on the board. We've talked about Joey Searson's interception return that sealed the victory last year for Carlsbad over La Costa Canyon on the road. And this time, Morales has this ball tipped at the line of scrimmage, hits off a couple of helmets, and falls right in the arms of Stedman Slaughter. And it was number 44, Shelby Williams, who got his hand on it. And then a great carom as it bounces right into Slaughter. Oh, my goodness. Uh, I I've been telling you, opportunistic. And this is how LCC puts up a lot of their points. And think about it, they have six passing touchdowns this year. They have four special teams and defensive touchdowns. Now that's five. Well, you've heard it more than one time. The tip drill, yep. one of the key elements of any football practice, tip drill on display, executed. Well done, Mavericks. And I doubt that you'll get any more easier than that one right there for Slaughter. This is a guy who missed some time, had a cyst removed from his jaw. 
came back, had four sacks last year in a great season. One of the leaders on the defensive side of the ball. Well, what a surprise. LCC has been the team for the most part self-destructing tonight with three turnovers and a number of critical penalties. But now Carlsbad turns it over for the second time. And this one goes back for the quick six. Bob McAllister had just called a timeout. Carlsbad was looking pretty decent on that drive as they got into Maverick territory. Neither offense has gotten anything done here tonight. And it's been a defensive touchdowns on the board. Van and Cole can see Snaros are deep for the Lancers. See Snaros number 26. Van and Cole four. Here's Zalud's kickoff. And see Snaros will take it at the seven yard line. Waits and now a burst of speed. See Snaros still on his feet. Dragging tacklers all the way out to the 35 yard line. Heck of a return of 28 yards. That's a nice little delay from David Cisneros. Got himself all the way to the 35 yard line. Now, the question for Carlsbad is do they have the big playability with just over a minute left in this half to put something on the board? Last week against Rancho Bernardo, they scored on almost consecutive plays of 80 and 63 yards to Michael Vandenkolk, who's wearing number four for Carlsbad, and he'll be split up to the near side of your screen, the bottom of your screen. They haven't thrown to him once tonight. He averages 26 yards of reception. First and 10 is going to be the handoff. See Snarrows trying to jitterbug, and he got knocked down quick by Jacob Driver, who's having himself a big uh, second quarter here. Uh, that defense for LCC has been impressive so far tonight. And Bob McAllister going hurry up here with less than a minute left in the half. Morales. Putting it up deep for Barber and overshoots him by a good seven yards. Well, he was under pressure, and that's been the story all night for Justin Morales. But under pressure all night long, the defense for LCC picking up their offense, which turned the ball over three times. And the defense has been the ones who scored. They've been putting pressure on Justin Morales. 36 seconds left. LCC had to take an early timeout, but they still have two. And if the Lancers pass here, the Mavericks will get a chance to at least run a couple of plays. Provided, of course, Carlsbad didn't get a first down. And if they run the ball, LCC can call a timeout real quick and force the punt. We'll be hearing at halftime from Courtney Dwyer getting an interview down on the field with the head coaches. Here's third and nine from the shotgun. Morales stares down his receiver. That ball got tipped at the line. It's incomplete, and they're lucky that that ball didn't go back the other way. And it could have been Shel Shelby Williams again, Craig, who yep. tipped that ball the last scrimmage. Well, all of a sudden, the Lancers ranked number one in the county and number seven in the state, unbeaten in 24 games, are looking very seriously at trailing at halftime on their home field, getting shut out and really looking dysfunctional in a lot of different ways, Jack. Yeah, both of these teams look dysfunctional on offense. And Carlsbad with the bigger of the mistakes in the interception return. LCC's played a real tough schedule. That's why the two and two mark. Mavericks try to rush the punter, but he gets it away. Backing up on the ball is Garrett. Now he's got some room. Cuts back inside of the 45 and is brought down just short of midfield. 20 seconds left to play in the first half. Two timeouts. Jordan Bevilacqua got the tackle on special teams for the Lancers. But here's a chance for Jose Moeller to stretch out his arm a little bit. We'll see how Darren Brown plays this one. Interesting to see if he takes a cut at the end zone or not. Moeller's only thrown one time in this game, Jack. It was complete for 24 yards early, but the Mavericks have uh, kept it on the ground exclusively, and that's a big change from what we've seen in their first four games. They average 19 pass plays a ball game coming in here. They only have one play. From their 49, they'll start it. And Moe is dropping back this time. Under pressure and down he goes. And coming in was Ewing. The senior free safety Vince Ewing came flying in on a safety blitz to record the sack. It's a big play by Ewing there. They were looking downfield. And Ewing was headed to Colorado next year with his first sack of the season. Had 100 tackles last year. Boy, Vince Ewing must have been a happy guy last weekend. Timeout was called by LCC. And a big upset win for the Buffaloes. That was a heck of a game. Big college football weekend coming up this weekend, and we're happy to have you with us 
for football under the Friday night lights. Don't forget you can check out replays of this game throughout the weekend and on demand on Time Warner Cable Sports. Channel 144, your Time Warner box gets you on demand. Well, friends, we want to say thanks to Dennis Ackerman and everyone at CIF San Diego section office for their cooperation in making tonight's coverage possible. CIF continues to work with parents and educators to establish and maintain athletic programs that teach values, character, and good citizenship. Thanks again to everyone at the San Diego section of the CIF. The loss of five on the Ewing sack. But LCC looking to try one more time here on second and 15 with 14 seconds left in the half. And Moeller under pr no pressure this time, lobbing it downfield. Catch is made inbounds. Yes! Caught by Kenny Stills for a huge game. Well, Kenny Stills has three touchdown receptions of the season. He got out of bounds as well with eight seconds left to go. He's their leading receiver on the year and a nice over the shoulder grab. Unbelievable. That's a well placed football as well Craig. That's a right there over the shoulder pass from Jose Moeller. All the way First into the 17 so I count that 39 yards in the air to Stills. And look at that perfect over the shoulder law. Already LCC is in field goal range. From the 17 yard line timeout called and that's their third and final timeout. With 7.9 seconds remaining, let's take another look at this rainbow pass. And Jose Moeller had all time to throw, Jack, for the first time all night. That's right. And actually came with a blitz. It was a late, delayed blitz there from Carlsbad, leaving the near side of the field open. They went to the far side. Boy, that's a nice pass. That's a nice looking pass from Jose Moeller. This is a kid who only completes 45% of his passes coming into the ball game. That's a beautiful one. So now Darren Brown thinking about it. He's got 7.9 seconds left. Enough for one shot at the end zone here, right. Jack. Right, because if you if you run the football or you complete a pass and stay in bounds, you might not have time to run the field goal unit on the field. You yeah. got to take a shot at the end zone. That early timeout they had to take might be killing him here. There's the pass to Stills. Can't get it off his fingertips. He was led just a little bit on coverage. Ryan Kincaid of the Lancers. And now you got to kick the field goal. Well, Stephen Dobbs and Bobby Zool both have field goals of 37 yards here this season. Did you see any interference on this Ryan play? Kincaid got there a little bit early, Craig. It was well timed, but he might have been just a bit early. Let's look again. I like nope, that coverage. Nope, that's beautiful coverage. That's, nice there's coverage. no call there. Great no call. So now a timeout called by the Lancers to ice the kicker coming out here. It's Steven Nobbs, the junior, looking to try this field goal. Yeah, LCC this year has had 37 yards from both Steven Nobbs and Bobby Zool. This will be a 34 yard attempt. Each one has one field goal. We want to say during this timeout, thanks again to the volunteer board members and advisors who serve on the Carlsbad Community Television Foundation. The foundation's a cooperative effort between the city of Carlsbad and Time Warner Cable. The CCTV, providing local television programming for San Diego's North County for over 20 years. 3.3 seconds remain in the first half. This game was scoreless until a minute 12 remained when a tipped ball bobbled up by Shelby Williams was returned for a Stedman Slaughter defensive touchdown. Now, LCC will line up the field goal from the junior knobs. The placement's at the 24-yard line. Mike McCormick will hold a 34-yard attempt. Brings down a high snap, it's blocked. A returnable play, diving on it is McCormick. Bo Thaler in there to save a potential three late points here for the Lancers as time expires in the first half. Well, it's a big time block by Carlsbad and heads up play by McCormick, the holder, to fall on that football and prevent Carlsbad from returning it for a game tying touchdown. What an exciting and yet confusing and bizarre <laughs> first half. Uh, we saw some really bad offensive plays at times, Jack, but we've seen some defenses firing and some huge special teams plays as well. Let's go down on the field. Courtney Dwyer standing by with a befuddled Bob McAllister. 
guys down here with Carlsbad's coach McAllister and coach couple turnovers and a scoreless first half not very characteristic of you guys no we're not playing very well uh, especially on the offensive side of the ball so got to give Lacosta Canyon credit they're playing tough defensively we knew they're a tough defensive club but you know we got to hold on the ball we got to catch the ball and we got to cut down on penalties so that's that's just we got to play better football all right thanks coach guys back to you Bob McAllister looking to regroup at halftime as the Lancers on their home field, their 24 game unbeaten streak, if not in jeopardy, at least uh, the yellow warning lights on right now as they trail LCC 7-0. We'll take a timeout, come back, bring you halftime festivities, get you ready for the second half. It's all coming up. Stay, to, stay with us live right here on Time Warner Cable Sports. The LaCosta Canyon Mavericks bursting their way out of the halftime locker room. They're ready to take on Carlsbad once again, leading the top-ranked Lancers 7 to nothing as we get ready to start the third quarter. Welcome back. Along with Courtney Dwyer and Jack Cronin, I'm Craig Elston. Michael Vandenkolk and Nick Pascarella are deep to receive the kickoff. Carlsbad will get the ball first, hoping to get some answers on offense, Jack. Uh, Craig, to say that the first half was sloppy would be an understatement. Five total turnovers, a ton of penalties, and zero offensive points. Been a pretty bad first half of football, but the Mavericks have a chance here for the upset. First loss in 25 games. They're trying to get that here tonight. The sophomore Bobby Zalud puts a leg in it and drives it through the end zone. It'll be a touchback, and the Lancers will take over on their own 20. Well, three turnovers for LCC, but two for Carlsbad, and one of them cost him the only points in the game. An interception return for a touchdown by Stedman Slaughter, third defensive touchdown of the season, and the fifth overall between special teams and defense for LCC has given the Mavericks at seven nothing lead Justin Morales now is being charged with getting this offense on track in the first half Nick Pastorella only 10 carries for 23 yards Morales is over his